Well, <clears throat> all of this is knowledge, and knowledge is at the essence of what we're trying to do. Competence and knowledge is at the essence of what we're trying to do, because by being competent, by being knowledgeable, we are no longer, nor, nor can they ever class us anymore as children, because this is not the knowledge of children. This is the knowledge far beyond even the highest of their ranks. So let's, let's move to now Washington, another centre of the occult. And given the time, I'm going to try and get through this bit reasonably quickly before I move on to the um, 100-day follow-ups on the deep pulse. But this is, this is relevant. And it's particularly relevant to people who have been trying um, within the United States to re-establish what they believe to be the de jure form of government in the form of the first United States and not the second United States as was created in 1871 in, uh, through the Organic Act of the District of Columbia. Well, over time and in the past, I, I ha have tried to understand some major events that have occurred, like 1812, and, and, and now realise that some of the events leading up what we witnessed was really uh, the bankers applying their pressure and not necessarily a coup. 1865 is a significant date, and I know many of you know this, given that this was the date that Abraham Lincoln issued his now infamous orders that effectively declared martial law. And what again I know a number of you know this, but some may not, that those orders that put the United States under the Constitution into martial law have been renewed by every subsequent president from Abraham Lincoln down to make sure that those laws remain still in effect every year, year after year, those orders are renewed and continue to be renewed. And when you look at 1871, long after the death of Abraham Lincoln, we find that the creation of the uh, second United States comes through the District of Columbia and the Act of Congress that creates an entirely duplicate version of the United States through an act. Well, first thing I'd like to say is to clear up some mis um, misconstruing that I had had in understanding what is the United States versus what is the District of Columbia. When you look at the Constitution of the United States, it is, in effect, a testamentary trust. The wording is to the effect a testamentary trust, not a sister KV. Now this is important, this is extremely important because when you look at the formation of the United States, effectively what was created through the Jesuits in their war when they were fighting uh, Europe and they were fighting the, the papacy, is they created a testamentary trust that does not belong to this entire system that we've been talking about, which is the Sester KVs in the British system. It stands apart. It's saying that this testamentary trust is between God, effectively, and the people of the United States. Well, that's, that's significant. <laughs> that is very significant. It also means that the role of the executor is an extremely important role. So I now pay homage once more to those that have uh, been attacking me and claiming all sorts of things I am in recognising I now see why you've placed so much importance because the original United States Constitution does in fact place enormous power in the office of the executor. But the District of Columbia, when it was created, and the President of the District of Columbia who is currently present, President Obama. He's not the President of the United States, he's the President of the District of Columbia that is falsely trading as the United States, is through an act of Congress. Now, what do we mean when we say the word e-state? E, by virtue of, statuo, a decree or judgment. So by virtue of a decree or judgment, a CESA KV is an artificial trust. The District of Columbia creates a trust that is artificial. So the District of Columbia is a classic example of the creation of a CESA KV of a very large nature. And of course it becomes the model to create other states underneath that state that are also CESA KVs to that state. It is ground zero 
for want of a better word, for the creation of SESTA KV stakes. But this is separate to the testamentary trust that is the first United States. So the second United States is without a shadow of a doubt testamentary trust. And therefore, the office, the highest office in that SESTA KV is the trustees, not the executor, the trustees. But under the original United States, it is without a shadow of a doubt a testamentary trust and the office of executor is incredibly important. So I'm sorry if in my previous chats and words that there's been some confusion, but again, we're trying to understand things clearer. And it's not as if they try and help us make it clearer, far from it. They've got people out every day of the week trying to confuse us. Now, why is this relevant? Well, it's, it's relevant for, for one key question. Who is the real president of the United States and why? Who is the real president of the United States and why? Well, we know that every year since 1865, the executive order, which gives all power to the office of the president, continues to be signed, the orders of Abraham Lincoln. And we also know that the office of president that has resided in the White House since 1871 is not the president of the original United States, but the president of District Columbia falsely pretending to be the United States, just as the District of Columbia falsely claims to be the United States of the world. Not just America, the world. And that's why the SEC and Delaware and uh, Newcastle is all a, a structure that registers states as SESTA KVs underneath this District of Columbia monster. So who is the president, the real president of the United States and why? Well, I'll give you a clue. When people go to Washington, they see him there, see him still in office, sitting in the seat of power of office with the symbol of power on either side of him, the fasces, the Roman fasces, which is the granting of power, absolute authority. It's unquestionable. He is the authority and the power still hiding in plain sight. The real president of the United States since 1865 to the present day is none other than Abraham Lincoln, President Lincoln. Why? Legally, because his orders are honoured to the present day and it gives absolute authority not just to the president but the president who signed those orders, Abraham Lincoln. So not only do they sign those orders every year to declare martial law, but they sign those orders every year to ensure that Abraham Lincoln remains president. He is the base of money, the only, the only piece of money that is worth equal to or more than its, uh, its creation is the penny, Abraham Lincoln. And Abraham Lincoln has been created as Zeus. He sits there in the absolute chair of power, still in office. Now the question is why? Why do this? <clears throat> well, as those that have, and hopefully will stop, but certainly until now, have been uh, attacking me for, is the recognition that the Office of Executor is an extremely powerful office. It is. The Office of Executor is extremely powerful. And the Office of President of the original United States is still an extremely powerful role because of the fact that it is a testamentary trust. So by placing Lincoln in that role and by enforcing martial law, they deprive us uh, of being able to uh, either claim the office of executor up until now or um, in being able to restore the republic to its original form. They also create a spiritual realm and be able to justify the claim of the United States being the United States of the world because the original United States has now become a spiritual realm. It's become the nation of God. And when we say in God we trust, 
we're not saying God as in God Almighty. We're saying the God created that we see as the Lincoln Memorial, Zeus, in God. In Lincoln we trust. Now I hope in future time this realisation and the fact once again this gives us evidence that we are dealing with people who trade on a daily basis in occult, in spiritualism, in curses, in spells. And when you think that you're dealing with people who are secular, rational, reasonable, it's all a front. It's a sham. These people are no more logical, rational or reasonable than the President of Iran. They are certifiable, they are insane, they are uncontrollable, they are, they are stripping us continually day after day and until we find a way to dislodge them, they will not stop. They will not stop what they're doing. So I hope that again gives you some food for thought in, in what they have done and why they've done it. Well, with the time left, and it's almost up to the hour, and I'm going to go through this now because I did promise I want to talk about some of the steps quickly and some of the steps that we're working on and following up. The first thing I have to say about the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll, and this comes from, directly from feedback from a number of you, and I thank you, that is that um, when you do issue an Ecclesiastical Deed Poll, you should consider placing a clear cellophane or some type of plastic that cannot be removed on top of your blood thumbprint. And that's simply because we've had a number of people say that uh, they've had them returned purely on the claim of uh, it being a health issue. I mean, look, it's a lame excuse. Under the UCC, under signatures, blood splotch is, in fact, one of the um, valid forms of signature. Why? Because they use it when they get the baby to sign the uh, birth record by dropping a piece of its blood onto the birth record. They need that to make what they're doing lawful. But look, through ignorance and these people, it's just as easy to put cellophane on top of clear tape or, or some kind of plastic protection on it so that they can't claim that it's a health risk. So I just put that out there for those on the call. Uh, and now, now let's talk about uh, the follow-up. So based on what we know about the cleric and the clerk, the first thing that I've suggested to you that if you receive a summons, a hearing or anything from the clerk that you re return a copy of it, with the deed poll on the reverse. Now, if after seven days you have not heard anything, uh, they have, in fact, uh, committed a sin, a grave sin, an ecclesiastical dishonour. So what we're suggesting and what we're working on is a step-by-step -step process <coughs> with these uh, instructions going to be up on the uh, UK University site, which we'll give to you at the end of the call. And that's uh, university full stop, uh, UK full stop info. And these instructions will be up on that site. But the next step after seven days is that we will be issuing a bill. We will be issuing a notice of ecclesiastical dishonour. We will uh, be asking you to prepare a, a notary public proof of service. And this will be sent to the clerk through registered mail. But more importantly, because our claim, our rightful claim, is that we are a trustee holding real property of a trust. We have every right to use the commercial codes, the UCC codes, as a property holder uh, to enforce our claim. Now, I know that there's been a, a terrible history with the UCC and that many people have seen good people go to prison, but there's a reason for that. And the reason is not that they didn't perfect their pr procedures with UCC, it's that they didn't perfect their standing before they started. If you lodge UCC without a claim of right, and the, ultimately the deed poll is both proof and a claim of right, we are competent, we are living, we are a trustee, we, are, we do have a trust, and all that you've presumed on the SESTA KV is false. If we haven't done that first, then absolutely. I would say to anyone doing UCC, beware, of what you're doing because they will come after you as they've done for others. But because of that, when we, use the, we do use the UCC, if there is anyone that comes after us, that becomes a proof of fraud. Why? Because they're using the SESTA KVs against us. And based on the deed poll, that is the fraud. So please don't feel fearful or concerned.